In Creole Parametric, you can flatten a harness in order to create the nailboard version of the model so you know how to manufacture the harness itself. Let's take a look at the interface for doing it and how not to do it. But before I get into Pro Harness, I recommend instead of using that, if you go to the Applications menu, you can use the Harness Manufacturing Extension. This comes from a company called Virtual Interconnect. They have a really great product. It is much simpler and faster than using the manual process using the standard manufacturing model. Let's take a look though how to create the standard manufacturing model if you're not using the harness manufacturing extension. And by the way, I don't have a license for the required version of the harness manufacturing extension in order to flatten this. I just have the light version which restricts the number of components that you can use. And here I get a little warning message and says, hey, this particular harness has 26 cables and 34 conductors. I would need to get the appropriate license in order to use HMX in order to do this. But again, I highly recommend the product from Virtual Interconnect. Now let's take a look at how to do it in the standard way in the cabling module. So here I have my cable harness. You can see the different connectors. We can see the different wires in here. To start off the new flattened harness, you'll go to the file menu and then choose new. You could also use the new icon or control N. Here in the new dialog box, we're going to change the model type from the default part to manufacturing. Here are the different subtypes, and you're going to choose the subtype for harness. And then we're going to give a name for the manufacturing model. Usually I name it the name of the harness, and this is harness underscore 2364, and then flat. And then you could write in a common name if you want, but I'm just going to click the OK button. And now it's asking, what harness do you want to flatten inside of here? So we're going to change, I'm going to use the subtype all down to harness to figure out, okay, here's the harness that I have in my folder. Let's click the open button. And now it asks you for the name of the harness, what simplified representation you want to use. And I would say that 99.9999% of the time, I would use the master wrap. I actually can't think of a reason why I would use a simplified representation. We'll click the open button, and then you're going to be prompted to create a flat harness assembly model. And I'll show you that in the model tree in a moment. Your different flattened features are going to be assembly level features. And the reason that you have an assembly inside of the manufacturing model is because you later on can add the different connectors from the cable harness assembly in there as well. And so for this case over here, I think it was like harness 2364. And I'll just call this the flat assembly. And again, you could add a common name. You could uncheck using the default template, but I will use the default template. PTC provides you a number of them. And so you're going to have an additional window open up. And usually I resize this to make it a little shorter and narrower. And this is a reference window for the particular harness that you are assembling. And I like to orient it sort of like the same way that I am looking at my harness in the other main window, just so I stay oriented. And the reason that you use this other window over here is to specify the different points where you're going to start and end. And right now I've got a thick cable display. Let me toggle over back to a center line display. You want to use the center line display because the different location points are only visible when you are in center line display. So let's go back to that. And one of the main reasons that you're going to also use this little sub window over here is to keep track of your progress. You'll see later on when I'm going through here, I will be using the harness information tools. And the one that I use probably the most often is flat status. And flat status, right now if I do something, 
it doesn't make a change in here it'll show what's already been routed in gray now one other thing about this I've got some gray wires in here and I've got some white wires I'm using a white background what I probably want to do at this point before I do anything else is change the color of my background so you can go to file options and then system appearance I'm going to expand the graphics group underneath global colors and here's the background and I'm going to try to change it to something that will give me a nice contrast to the different colors in here now when I choose that I can see okay there are the different white wires here are some of the different gray wires if I left in the white background I would not be able to keep track of my progress through here for starting out to flatten this you will use the flatten command out of the menu manager and be aware I know people are going to complain about this and have issues with this pro harness is really driven by the menu manager so in other words there hasn't been that much update to the way that the commands are available and honestly a couple decades because this menu manager dates back to really the pro engineer 2001 era and earlier but this is what it is and another reason why I recommend using the harness manufacturing extension from virtual interconnect to start out you're going to click on the layout command and you're going to set a start point and what I recommend doing and actually PTC recommends this as well it's not like you know Dave recommendation is that you start out in the middle of sort of like the the thickest bundle of your wires and so for me I think a good starting location would be one of these points over here you'll notice that you can see all the different location points for the wires and the network itself you can click on any of these because they're all sort of like mathematically equivalent and so I click on that and you get a little arrow for the direction that's going to lay it out to and I'm actually going to start laying out this portion over here in my first uh, segment when I do this for real what you probably don't want to do is you probably don't want to use auto fan and I'll show you why I don't use auto fan over here let me make this window a little bigger the reason that auto fan is going to have some problems is that also this particular harness uh, I got an XML file from an old PTC data set these have some loops in here and what I mean loops is where you have sort of these triangles over here where the wires can go this direction they go this direction and they also go across over here and these loops are are pretty nasty for flattening out your wire harnesses and again I think there's there's a few of them in here and eh, not too bad over here uh, here we have a loop with just the network but not with the actual harnesses but here you can see this is also creating sort of like a, a triangle shape and the manual or excuse me the automatic fan is going to go along here and it's going to highlight and say hey which of these directions do you want to go along for the main branch and honestly the auto fan usually doesn't end up generating what I want but let's take a look at what happens when we do the auto fan now it's asking for the bend radius that we want to use and typically you're going to use the bend radius of the dowels or whatever pins that you are using when you are flattening this out for real on your nail board so I'm going to pretend that I have quarter inch dowels so I'll enter 0.25 as the bend radius and you see now it highlights in here and says okay a loop is found and highlighted it's highlighting the loop and it says select a location on, or excuse me uh, please select the path on which you want to flatten and so I'm gonna flatten along over here and so then it highlights is like okay again it's like which one do I want to go along let's select over there and then it's like okay we've got another one over here and part of the problem that I also have with the auto fan is like it's highlighting this stuff here and right now I just have to sort of guess like what I'm supposed to select and I'll be honest I'm not the best person at flattening harnesses uh, let's see it asked me which way do I want to go over here uh, let's go along this one over there and then it's like hey which one do you want to go over here I don't know I'll pick that one and then it's got these different paths over here which way do we want to go I don't know this one and so now it's calculating 
And so there we go. And here we have what we got automatically. It had to pull in a couple of the different connectors. So again, this is why you have an assembly model in the manufacturing model. So for example, if I scroll down in here, you can see all the different assembly level features that were created. And then scrolling down, here are a couple of the components from the cable assembly that were extracted as well that were necessary in order to flatten this out over here. But like I said, I take a look at this and I would probably have to go to the move segment command or use the modify command to get this oriented the way that I want because frankly, I, I, I don't like how this got flattened out over here automatically. And if I gave this to my manufacturers, they would probably be like, what are you doing? Why do you have a job? So anyhow, that is, is what I got with the automatic method. Let me, I'm going to close out of here. Let me go to the view tab and then close this. All right, so I closed the window of the first attempt I did at this. Let's erase not display to get rid of this and then start over again. Uh, let me start over from the harness model itself. So once again, we'll go to new and change to manufacturing, change this to harness. Let's call this harness 2364 and then flat and I'll click the OK. One thing I want to mention about this manufacturing file that ends up generate, being generated, it's going to have a .asm extension. If you're using older versions of Pro Engineer, like from the wildfire days or earlier, or if you have manufacturing models that were created in those older versions, they're going to have a .mfg extension instead. So let's click the OK button. And now for the harness, and by the way, if you, uh, for the harness, let's change this again to harness so I can quickly get to the harness part, use the master rep, and let's create our assembly that's going to go inside of the manufacturing model. And click the OK button. And again, I recommend resizing this window and making sure that the model's oriented the way that you want it to be when you're starting out the flattening process. So now this time I'll go back to flatten. Let's choose layout. And again, I'll set the start point at the same location. And so we get our arrow in here. For the manual fan, I go pretty much step by step. In this video, I'm just going to go and lay out the first trunk of wires, uh, just because if I did the whole thing in this video, this video would end up being an hour long. Uh, I usually just go segment by segment, location point by location point for much of the time. But let's just do again our next segment. I'm just going to go to here because again, I want to lay out first this long set of cables over here along this path over here and I want to make sure that I branch out along here so again I just go one segment at a time so again I'll pick that location there here it asked me for the bend radius it really doesn't matter for this one because I'll enter a value of 0.25 but now it asks me for the bend angle and I just want this to go out straight so I'm going to use a value of zero and just hit the enter key and so there we have the first branch of wires that were laid out for us. And it's kind of going the opposite way of how I'm oriented on the screen. I started out over here and went out to over there. And so just to show you what I would do at this point, right now we still have our start point located right there. We'll change the start point and then pick out over here as a new start point. There you see the direction the wires are going to be laid out to. And then for manual fan, I would just go right to this nook location over here and ask me for the bend radius. And I'm just going to use an angle of zero again. So then I have this bunch of wires out over here. And then when we come back in part two, I'll continue going out, laying out the wires long over here and then change directions and go out over here, so forth and so on. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.